Hello, we are here today with multi-instrumentalist G.R. Davis. He plays the tuba as well as the euphonium, the electric bass, and the upright string bass. He has played all over Nashville as a freelance artist at the Jerome Jackson Showboat, Opryland USA, as well as Firehouse Jazz Band. He has also performed all over the country with various symphonies and orchestras. So tell us, how did you get interested in music? Well, uh, my mother was a, a church musician, uh -huh. and uh, she got a piano when I was very small, and I started trying to pick out tunes on the piano, and, okay. and one thing led to another, and they decided I should uh, try the school band. So uh -huh. in the school band, uh, this particular instrument was free. You yes. had to buy one, and uh, it was big and shiny, so it appealed to me, <laughs> and uh, that's how it all started. And, and my band director also doubled on string bass, which hmm. was not not unusual uh, in years past for sure. that to happen, so, so that's how I got into both of those. Now, did you go to college for music? Yes, uh, I went to the University of North Alabama mm. um, in Florence, which is my hometown. Okay. And then after that, I was interested enough that I went on to grad school at uh, Indiana University Very and, nice. and did a, a master's in tuba performance up there. Wow. <laughs> So how does learning how to play the tuba translate into learning how to play the bass and vice versa? Okay, well, you're, you're playing in the same register, you know, you're, you're sure. functioning as the same role to play the bass notes. But uh, historically, a lot of um, tuba players and bass players used to double uh, because it, it goes back to the days of the early jazz bands when okay. they didn't have uh, very much uh, in the way of electronic amplification. Mm. And a tuba just projects and carries a little better than a sure. string bass. And they also recorded better in the days before they had modern microphones mm -hmm. and amplifiers and so forth. Mm. Uh, as far as learning goes, uh, they're, they're very different, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, you've got to use different skills. But you've already learned to read the music, so mm. you're reading the, the same line off the, off the music. Okay. And uh, you actually can play the same music on either instrument if, hmm. uh, if you need to. Neat. So it seems to me that learning um, an instrument that is uncommon, say in, high, in a high school band, mm -hmm. um, it seems like that is easier to get a college scholarship. Is that true? Uh, it, it is true at Vanderbilt, where, okay. uh, where I've been teaching since 1992. Mm -hmm. I, I taught the college level players for quite a while and, mm -hmm. and pre-college as well. And we've had, uh, I think since I've been there, three uh, high school students, uh, one of whom was from White House. Um, and uh, I think one was from up here at Beach High School. We've oh. had, we've had uh, at least three students that, uh, that I know of who received a full ride scholarship to Vanderbilt mm -hmm. because of their uh, playing tuba because you know Blair mm. needed Blair School of Music needed more tubas. Sure. And of course that's worth quite a bit of money at, oh, at yes. Vanderbilt as you Absolutely. can imagine. <laughs> We're going to uh, talk just a minute about how you start out playing a tuba. Uh, first of all, in order to get a sound out of a tuba, we've got to have something vibrating in order to move the air column in the horn, and that would be a, a lip buzz. Uh, the lip buzz looks some, sort of like this. It's not something that we're unfamiliar with. It's very easy to do. 
Um, and then, of course, we have to learn to control that buzz in order to get different pitches out of the horn. We're going to apply the buzz now to a mouthpiece, which is just a, a cup-shaped piece of metal here that can fit into the end of the horn. And by the way, mouthpieces can come in different sizes and shapes. Now, once we get the buzz going through the mouthpiece, and of course, I'm changing the buzz uh, to a lower pitch as I go down on the horn and move the valves. And the valves uh, make the horn actually slightly different lengths, which change the overtone series, and that allows the pitch to change. And that's basically what playing a tuba is all about. Well, the excitement continues on the show today because it is International Tuba Day. From the Vanderbilt Blair School of Music, we have the Tootin Tuba Trio. Here they are. <laughs> to us um, a little bit about the style of the New Orleans jazz funerals. Okay, well one of the styles of, of music that I learned to play uh, with the tuba is Dixieland mm -hmm. kind of music. And uh, Dixieland originated down in, in New Orleans yeah. when the marching bands sort of um, merged with uh, gospel and uh, blues bands and mm -hmm. so forth. And uh, they played a lot of hymns. and. Uh, Pretty soon, uh, people realized that you know we could have a band like this play a funeral, yeah. in which they did. And then the band uh, members would like to have a little fun on the way back from the <laughs> funeral. You know, after the the deceased is uh, disposed of, you know, uh, as they came back, they would rag or jazz up yeah. the the Dixieland tunes. And so that's kind of the tradition, and it 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 has carried on mm -hmm. very much till today in New Orleans. But even here, we play some uh, jazz funerals mm. and uh, I think it, it's it's a very good spirit mm -hmm. you know and I think people really appreciate that definitely a sense of celebration absolutely <laughs> worked with um, military bands. Tell us about your time with that. Okay, well I uh, was invited by Uncle Sam to join the Vietnam conflict okay. back in 1968 and uh, and I chose to defend our country using a sousaphone mm -hmm. in the 74th Army Band in mm. Indianapolis. But uh, a little later than that I got the opportunity to join a, a multi-service group mm. uh, through the Marine Corps detachment called the United States Armed Forces Bicentennial Band and Chorus. That's quite a name. And um, we played in all 50 state capitals wow. and cities in between. I think our total attendance was around 1.6 million people. Mm. A lot of people were interested in things like that during the U.S. Bicentennial. Sure. And uh, we got to do a lot of interesting uh, uh, things other than concerts. Uh, uh, one time I, I played uh, in a CBS, uh, no, I mean an ABC television mm -hmm. special, mm -hmm. and we backed Frank Sinatra in uh, wow. the house I live in. Uh, we got to play for people like Jose Ferrer and Burl Ives and all kinds of you know interesting people and of course a lot of traveling. Got to yeah. see a lot of a lot of sights and so that was a lot of fun. I bet. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, tell us about some of the things that you're working on throughout the years. Well, uh, one project that is very interesting to me that, that I've been doing since I moved to Nashville in 1987 mm. is called Tuba Christmas. Okay. And it's something that happens nationwide. We, we get groups of tuba and euphonium players together, mm -hmm. and we play Christmas carols, and it, it helps promote the image of the tuba, and it gives all of us a chance to visit. And yeah. uh, the one in Nashville has gotten to be very popular. Uh, the last couple of years we've had around 150 or more tuba wow. players to play. That's a lot of tubas yes. in one place. And uh, we draw pretty good-sized crowds. I, I think uh, last year we had around 2,000 people wow. to hear us at First Baptist Church in Nashville. And, of hmm. course, we'll be doing it again this year and every year. So I hope that uh, some of the people who see this interview might uh, send me an email to find out when it is. Yeah. It's usually the, the second Tuesday of, um, of December. Okay. It's a lot of fun. I bet. Well, thank you so much for taking the time and sharing with us today. Well, thank you for asking. <laughs>